I'm Leanna Lowenstein, Child and Family Therapist in Toronto, Canada. And it is my honor and great pleasure to welcome Diane Fry, who is going to be presenting a technique. Uh, Diane is a professor emeritus at Wright State University of Dayton, Ohio. She is a psychologist in private practice. She has been a play therapist for over 45 years and won the Lifetime Achievement Award by the Association uh, for Play Therapy, which is uh, just a huge honor. And uh, so she's also the author of many books and chapters in books, including this wonderful book, uh, which I use often in my own clinical practice called Using, play in, uh, using, using Magic in Play Therapy. So Diane, welcome. Thank you. Uh, let's, hear, let's hear your technique. Good. Well, I wanted to share with you this technique. It's called the Hinged House Technique. The purpose of this technique is to help people uh, explore and verbalize more about family life and, what, and what's going on in their um, own family. So it, it's also a very inexpensive technique to do since you just get a manila folder and then you, if there are any little tabs on the manila folder, you just want to cut those off. And then you make a roof for your house like this. However, if you live in an environment where people live with houses with flat roofs, you would want to make your house with a flat roof because you want to take into consideration the culture of the child or adult um, you're working with. So then it's called the hinged house technique because once you have cut the middle folder like this and you open it, it's hinged on the side. So it looks like a house. So what you ask the client to do is on the front to draw a house of some significant memory to them. Uh, I once had a client who was only six years old and she had lived in six different foster homes. But you let the client choose one that has significance for them. Uh, some people have lived in the same house you know, all their life. So it's up to them to choose a house they would like to draw. And on the front, they draw what that house looked like. Then inside, they draw what went on in the house. So, and then on the back, they draw secrets of the house, things that you're not really supposed to tell. And so what's interesting is um, people draw, uh, you know, routines that go on inside the house. It, you get an idea for like sibling patterns inside the house uh, and routines that um, people do in the house. Or um, people have drawn things like, well, what happens in the house is mom or dad is always drunk on the recliner. and uh, or mom and dad go to the study all night and they're on the computer or they're in their room or so-and-so is in the basement um, all night and so-and-so is upstairs or whatever and so you get to see those patterns or so-and-so -so is watching TV all the time or on the computer you know, or whatever. And then on the back they draw secrets of the house so people often draw Things like mom or dad are drunk every night, they drink too much, they say they don't drink. When you say, Daddy, why are you drunk? They say, I'm not drunk. And so, and don't ever tell anyone I'm drunk. Or things like um, uh, drug abuse, um, they often draw um, other kind of like family secrets that are not um, to be told. And so they would draw that like, you know, on the back. So it's very revealing in terms of um, lifestyles in families, in terms of what's going on with clients. But that's how I first started doing the hinged house technique with child clients. And then I started using this technique in premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. And so I would have each person draw a house that they remembered, what went on inside the house, the same thing, secrets of the house in the back. And then we would discuss their expectations of the marriage they're about to enter. And that is good, very helpful in premarital counseling because, as we know, people bring from their family of origin certain expectations about their own marriage. 
And so that's worked very well too. And I've also used it in uh, marital play therapy in the same way uh, to discuss like what are the frustrations of the marriage? Why are they having difficulty? The other thing I like about it is it can, it can be used in so many ways. It can be used with um, couples who are two men, couples who are like two women. I'm working with an 82-year-old woman now who's living with her 60-year-old daughter, and they have a lot of conflict in their house, and the daughter doesn't want to put the mother in assisted living. The mother doesn't want to go to assisted living, but they have different expectations about what should happen in the house. And so I've used Hinged House with them to help illuminate their concept of what is underlying you know, the conflict in, in that particular situation. So you can see how many different ways you can really uh, use this technique and um, it's very um, easy and cost effective to use. This is such a wonderful technique that has so many applications. I mean, you can use this with clients of so many, you know, of varying age ranges. You can use it in individual therapy, in couples mm -hmm. counseling, in marital therapy, in, uh, in family therapy. So it's just such a wonderful technique, um, very innovative, and I'm sure um, my audience um, will um, really receive this so well. So thank you, Diane, for sharing this wonderful technique. Um, I really appreciate uh, you being here and sharing your very innovative work. And thank you for inviting me.